What is up, GCIO? Welcome to this week of GCIO Online. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Caitlin. I'm part of the team here at Inside Out, and I'm so excited to be here with you. And before we get started, I want to know, what'd you do this weekend? Go ahead and drop something in the chat. Let's get that chat rolling, and we'll be looking at it as it pops up on the screen. And while you're on your phone, if you don't follow us on social media, make sure that you follow us at GC Inside Out or GCIO H Mill on Instagram and Gwinnett Inside Out on TikTok. Last week, we started part one of Come Through Faithful with your boy, Kevin Kubandi, and it was incredible. So if you missed that message, you can check it out right here on our YouTube channel after tonight's stream. But right now, I'm gonna hand it over to Shane Sanchez for part two of Come Through Faithful and the rest of tonight's Inside Out. We'll see y'all later. Let's talk about something that means a lot to all of us. Do you want to get life right? Seriously. I mean, don't we all just want to get life right? We have one shot at this thing, and we want to do the best that we possibly can to live it as right and as good and as full as possible. So what if there was a way to ensure that that happens? Yeah, I'm serious. In fact, in the next few minutes, I want us all to be able to answer that question confidently. But first, before we get to any of that, let me ask you a different question. Are you someone who prefers the freeway or the scenic route? I know it's weird. Yeah, it doesn't feel right. And it's a hard left turn from what we were just talking about. But, but hang with me. I would guess that some of my more whimsical friends that are watching are like, oh, I just love the long drives and I love seeing the wildflowers in the hills and plus you can stop and it makes my Instagram grid look so much better. Like, I get it. Some of us, we are all about that. But then my more efficient friends that are watching are rolling their eyes because they're like, Oh, are you kidding me? My stepdad is the king of making drives and road trips twice as long as they need to be. Look, I, I get it. Honestly, my family and I just went on a trip recently, and my dad on the way home stopped twice. Once for peaches on the side of the road, and the other time to take a picture with a giant peanut? Like, what? Who does that? But, but it's just a reality, and maybe if you're one of my more efficient friends, you feel my pain. I'm not going to tell you exactly what type of person I am, but I do want to take you out to the West Coast with me for a second. See, I grew up vacationing uh, all over California. I, I grew up in Arizona, so it was the easiest place to go, especially for the beach. I, I mean, from San Diego to Orange County to Los Angeles, that is, uh, those are places that I have went more times than I can count for family trips or trips with friends or, or whatever else. And What's interesting is that there's really one key drive that almost everybody who vacations in California makes, and it's along this freeway that, that takes you from places like San Diego to Disneyland, and then from Disneyland to Los Angeles. And that freeway is the I-5. Let me show you a picture of it, just so you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Look, I know Atlanta traffic is bad, but Southern California traffic is a different beast all together. I mean, I don't understand it. There's just so many people that live out there. It is this gigantic freeway with so many lanes and, and honestly not much to look at except for these billboards for things that you and I will never use. But, but it's always packed. There's always a ton of traffic. But the reality is it's the quickest and most efficient way to make it all up and down north to south, south to north, all up and down Southern California. But I have something else on my bucket list. In fact, yeah, seriously, I have a different route that I, at some point in my life, would love to take because the I-5 is the most efficient way, the quickest way, the easiest way through Southern California, but there's this other road. It's, it goes along the, the Pacific Coast of California. It's called the PCH or the Pacific Coast Highway. It's slow. There are a ton of stops. It goes through small beach towns, which you can imagine what that's like. And it's a much more difficult drive. That's just a reality of it. But it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, you get it now, don't you? That drive is so worth it. I mean, 
I literally, in my life, one time, want to be in a convertible, cruising up and down the West Coast with my wife by my side, Laney playing, don't judge me, they're incredible and super California vibes, whatever, they're good, okay? And Laney playing, blasting, my hair going through the wind, this is getting weird, okay? But I, I want to make that drive. And as many times that I've been to California throughout my life and I vacation along that coast, I've still never made it. What's weird is that that drive is still on my bucket list. And you know why that is? Honestly, it's because taking the five is easier. I mean, I've driven it a bunch of times and, and it's just more efficient than that drive, that beautiful drive up and down the PCH. I mean, time and time again on these trips that I've taken, I've sacrificed the beauty of the scenic way for the ease of the freeway. And if we want to get for real, for real, for a second, many of us do the same thing all of the time. I mean, we often take the easy way. I mean, just think about it this way. How many times has your mom or your stepmom asked you to clean up your room and you just stuffed everything in the closet out of sight so that you passed the test and made it to this place of clean? Or maybe um, how many times have you asked a, a, a friend for the answers to your homework rather than doing the difficult, tedious, time-consuming work of studying for it yourself? I, I mean, we even see this and little kids, we all can, can picture the little kid feeding the vegetables to their dog under the table instead of actually eating the food that their parents want them to eat. Like, it's a real thing, but we do this in other ways, too. I mean, we cut corners, we make compromises of our character, and we try things that aren't what we know to be best, but are just easier. I mean, it's just easier to go to the party where some things are going to happen that we know may not be best or may not even be legal than it is to turn down the invitation and look lame to all of our friends. I mean, it's easier to go further than we promised ourselves when we were younger that we would. It's easier to, to go with the joke instead of being the one friend who decides to step up and speak up and say, hey, maybe, maybe we shouldn't talk about that in that way. But before you think that, that I'm saying all of this, this judgment to you, I want you to know that this is not just something you experience. I mean, this is very real for me too. This is very real for everyone. You know why? Because we're human and we face these kinds of decisions every single day. I mean, when we cut corners, when we make compromises, when we choose the easy way, it's important that we remember that it's called the easy way for a reason. But what if that way, the easy way, isn't actually what's best? And what if you and I didn't have to try to guess and figure out every single day of our lives what is best and how we do get the most out of this one life that we have? In fact, what if 2,000 years ago, on a hillside in Israel, Jesus laid out what life is supposed to look like and how to live it, a way to live it, in the best way possible? Well, many people think he did just that. And thankfully, one of his closest followers, this guy named Matthew, decided to write down what he heard Jesus say. It's recorded in what we now call the book of Matthew in, in the modern day Bible. And, and what's happening is fascinating. 2,000 years ago, some people had gathered around Jesus, and he decided to start to talk about this way of life, or this way that he said was best for life, on all sorts of different topics. I mean, seriously, from, from divorce to anger, from anxiety to prayer. I mean, he covered so much this day when he was speaking to a crowd. And then after he lays out this way that you and I can experience life, the way that he says is best, it's almost like he goes, hey, um, before you're tempted to think that those are all just suggestions, he decides to go in. And that's where we're going to pick up tonight. Look at, look at what he says. Matthew records it in chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. He says this, enter by the narrow gate. 
For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. Destruction? And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. He's like, look, look, look. Everything that I just taught you about about life, I know. It's different. It's weird. It doesn't always make sense. And it's definitely not easy. But it's right. It's exactly what you're looking for. And yeah, look. I know a lot of other people do things a a lot of different ways. And and I know that they have a lot of ideas for how you should live your life that promise to give you the the, the most out of life. But, But what if those things are actually leading you in a different direction? What if the way that's easiest, coasting through life, cutting corners, making compromises, just going with the flow of what culture says is best, what if they're actually taking you in the opposite direction from where you want to wind up? Look, 2,000 years ago, Jesus himself was trying to help you and I understand what it takes to get this one life that we have right. He wanted us to understand that he would show us what's best if we would just choose to follow the way that he taught us to live. We'd wind up experiencing the life that we were created to experience. And in some ways... It feels like he's saying, look, (laughs) it's my way or the highway. And and I don't think he was saying it like snotty or or with attitude, but it's like he knew that we would have a tendency to give in to temptations that that promise us so much and, 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 and that the world around us will throw at us constantly. Temptations to compromise on, on what we know is best for what feels good or, or, or to try what, what all of our friends are trying just in order to fit in or, or, or even um, to compromise on things to, to make us feel like we're valued. Because, I mean, after all, when, when we flex the things that we have, we're doing it for the clout. And at the end of the day, in so many ways, it helps us feel the value that we long for. Look, Jesus 2,000 years ago was speaking to the reality of the types of decisions that you and I have every single day. Speaking into the reality of the temptations that we face to want to be the the big man or the big woman on campus. To want to fit in regardless of the compromise that it takes. And I know that a lot of people choose to do certain things, to find all of that. But 2,000 years ago, it was like Jesus is saying, hey, there is something better. It's hard. It's exhausting. It won't always make sense to everyone around you, but it takes you on the journey through life to experience the life that you were created to experience. Look, If you and I are going to get this life right, we have to understand the best way isn't easy, but the easy way isn't best. So here's what I want to ask you. It's June. I mean, summer is cruising and the world is making plans to reopen, go back to school, back to sports and on and on and on. You know that. So what way will you choose? What way will you choose for the rest of this summer? What, what way will you choose for the next school year? What way will you choose for the rest of high school, for the rest of your life? And before you answer that, before it feels too overwhelming, before you think, well, yeah, but, but if I really, really go in on following the ways of Jesus, it, it's going to create a whole bunch of chaos in my life that I don't know if I'm actually ready for. Before you answer, I want you to know a few things. The first one is this, we'll help. (laughs) I think that's why we're here as GCIO, to help you as a teenager navigate what it means to follow the way of Jesus during these four years of your life. So we'll help week in and week out, day in and day out. But I also want you to know you're not alone in this journey. See, when Jesus said that 2,000 years ago, he wasn't like, hey, um, here's what you should do. Now go figure it out for yourself. No, 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 no. He walks with us. 
He promised not to just show us the way, but to help us along in the way to experience the life that he says is best. You're not alone. God is with you. He says, just believe in me, and, and, and you receive the life that you were longing for. And then he shows us by, by his power and the power of his Holy Spirit that lives in us what it looks like to live that out. And I also want you to know that we will walk the way together. So you're not alone because God is with you, but we're with you, and we're for you too. Your small group is with you and for you. In fact, that's why we do small groups, so that, that you have a group of people to follow the way of Jesus with. So what way will you choose to follow? And, and here's how we're going to start this whole thing. I mean, the challenge is to follow the way of Jesus, but, but you, you, you have to, to have more than that. I, I mean, I get what that sounds like. It, it's, a, it's a big idea without much to do after it. But the good news is, is we, the words that we looked at of Jesus were, were toward the tail end of all of the things that he had to say that day on the mountainside in Israel. So you're going to see the details for this on Instagram soon, but I'm going to challenge all of us. Even those of us who aren't Christians yet, or we go, I'm not sure, I'm kind of skeptical on all of this. I still want to challenge you to actually read what Jesus taught as the way that leads to life. Because he lays this out in so many different areas in the pages right before what we read today. So, starting tomorrow, as GCIO, and especially as your small group, we're going to start by reading the Sermon on the Mount. We'll give you instructions on, on how we can do this together as a small group. It's five days. That's all we're talking about here. And it's going to give you a lot to think about and a lot to talk about with your small group. But if we're going to choose to follow the way of Jesus, then we should probably get a grasp on what he says is best. So what's it going to be? This school year, the next four years, the rest of your life. And what if this school year was the best one yet. Not the easiest, but the best, because you chose to truly follow the way of Jesus. What if our com community began to change because hundreds of teenagers committed not just to, to coming to church or, or believing certain things, but to actually living out the way of Jesus? It's important for us to understand the earliest Christians that followed Jesus in those early days thousands of years ago, they weren't known for where they go on Sundays or, or just the things that they believe. They were literally called followers of the way because they had encountered Jesus and their lives had been completely changed from the inside out. Their lives actually began to look different than the lives of anybody around them. And since that movement has started, billions of people have chosen to be a part of it. I can't help but wonder if, if it's because Jesus was the answer to finding the life that every human being longs to live. And he decided to use a group of people who he had changed from the inside out to show the world what that looks like. And then other people watched and they couldn't help but want to experience Jesus for themselves. And maybe, just maybe, he wants to do the same today. And he's inviting you and I to be the people that he uses to show the world the way to life, the way it's supposed to be. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for loving us and for showing us a way of life. Lord, for not settling just at a set of beliefs or, or certain things to think, but instead saying, hey, no, 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 I want to help you live your life. I want to help you navigate conflict. I, I want to help you understand anxiety. I want to give you something that you can root your identity is. I, I want to help you be able to answer and navigate some of the biggest questions that you will face. You're that kind of God who cares that practically and that simply and that uniquely, and we are so grateful for that. So God, as we step out boldly, to follow the way of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that we would sense your help. Lord, that we would, that we would uh, lean into one another and support one another in this. And that Gwinnett County would begin to change because a group of people begin to live out life the way that we were created to. Life how it's supposed to be. Life the way that you say is best. Lord, thank you for showing us the way.
pray all this in Jesus' name.